It's the TV heaven telly hell. It's the show for anyone who's ever sat in front of their telly and gone, oh, for f <laughs> Jesus. It's a trick. Chicken with rhubarb. You're fat, that's why. <laughs> Oi, horse. Keys in the marmalade. <laughs> of course, we've all got our own ideas how to improve television. I want to see a show where two straight guys go around a gay guy's house and just sort his life out. <laughs> Bleed his radiators, insulate the loft, <laughs> sink out his toilet. <laughs> just give him a few tips. Don't stand like that. <laughs> Put your hands in your pockets. <laughs> Drink this, it's lovely. <laughs> you need a bigger dog. <laughs> and then take his socks out of the wash bin and go, they're all right, gonna have two more days out of them. <laughs> but now, to tell us what he loves and hates about television, please welcome my guest, Johnny Vaughan. Okay, thanks for coming on, Johnny. That's right, Sean. Well, you've given us a lot of choices for stuff that you like and hate on television. And your first choice is a documentary it's from the 1980s. It's from 1985. No, it's oh, a documentary right. uh, about a biker chapter called The, the Outcasts yeah, in, well, I think, Lincolnshire. It's surreal, it's interesting, it is hilariously funny, it's insane. The Outcasts. You have an hanging round period, and after the members get to know you, the members vote you in. And then you have to prospect from the, and then it's down to me when you get your patch, or if you get your patch. If I miss a meeting, then probably get my ass kicked and a fine. He is a general dog's body. He does everything and anything that uh, members in the club tell him to do. We've thrown him off cliffs, we've thrown him off fires. We've, uh, we've met him generally, sitting in front of fires with fuck all on, man and scotch. We've done all sorts to him, man. <laughs> First of all, what I, I love about this is the fact he's specially got a badge, I think, for the documentary saying, fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> love in touch. But that guy also, he gets fined by them for being late for things. Probably get me arse kicked in a fine. Yeah. They call themselves the outcasts and they've, they've sort of yeah. outcast themselves from society. They've made their own little sect with their own little rules. And the funny yeah. thing is, to escape society's rules, they've made up this little society that's almost stricter. <laughs> I mean, what I'm saying, if you're late for work, you don't get your ass kicked in a fight. <laughs> but once, once you become a member of the outcast, it seems that you become irresistible to bored housewives. Women are into a bit of rough, yeah, you get a lot of women coming around, especially the married ones, that say they're happily married to see somebody like, like us. And all of a sudden, like, they want, they want to see what it's like, the other side, like. Once they've tried it, they don't leave it. Okay, okay, look, just look at that end bit again there. It's a lovely scene. He's having a, the leader is having a nice can of beer looking at a beautiful stream. But that's not hard enough. It's not hard enough. He's been told to do something destructive and anarchic. And so you're saying the documentary makers have manipulated They must have. They've manipulated. They must have egged them on. That's why it's quite a funny documentary. Well, a very funny documentary, because they have really stitched these lads up. Just look at that, just that end bit again. It's a beautiful scene. I don't know if we can get it in slow motion. It's a wonderful thing. Look, can of beer, bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Needless. It is, isn't it? Maybe the specific gravity of that beer wasn't yeah, satisfying. Yeah, it's, it's, it's it's I know it only has one can because he's driving. Driving, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but their meeting place is uh, it's a very interesting place. It's a pub, stroke, gym, stroke. It's a dojo, really, isn't it? It's, it's, a, it's uh, a dojo. So you no, can do karate and have pork scratchings at the same time. This, <laughs> this, for me, is what really brings this home. It is. When I was watching it the first time, I, I, I had to, you have to watch it again because you're laughing so much, you miss all the punchlines, even though they're meant to be punchlines, but this pub is genuinely off the scale insane. <laughs> I used to be an ABA boxer. I trained for the Lincoln Imps. I'm just trying to get rid of some of the fat of and uh, get my act together again. And then start doing some serious fighting. Right? The rest of the club um, are all into it. They're all doing their own training. In, in my problem, we maybe have winner stays on at pool. Yeah. Better they get to get the cue. We're well, certainly not the David Lloyd centre, is it? No. That, yeah. <laughs>
it's not. It's a very different ambience and feel they've gone Home's from. place it ain't. No. <laughs> I mean, do you have a favourite bit? Do you like a, a choice? My favourite bit is um, with the man who's the designated leather worker. Uh, because I believe that when he describes how he got into leather working, it is the most extraordinary backstory yeah, is, uh, yeah. of anything I've ever heard on television. You cannot... You, 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 it just passes by you. And it went off about the 50th viewing. You think to yourself, what, what on earth did happen? The 50th viewing. <laughs> yeah, you think, what was the story of that? This is... Well, let, let's, uh, let's see, let's see. Somebody bought a pouch, it was in bits. A cheap one, out of a, a rubbish bin. It was in a leather shop and asked me to put it together. Bought about three books and just studied it out of that, like, you know. OK, now this guy, let's just listen to that, yeah? What he says. He says, somebody bought a pouch. It was in bits. <laughs> somebody bought a pouch. It was in bits. <laughs> a cheap one. <laughs> out of a rubbish bin. <laughs> in a leather shop. <laughs> what the fuck happened? <laughs> really, look, somebody bought a pouch, asked me to put it together. If you... And then he says, I bought about three books, stood it out of there like. <laughs> Things in rubbish bins normally are cheap. Yeah. In fact, do you know what? I'm, I'm going to tell you straight. They're normally free. <laughs> normally, if I see things in a rubbish bin, I think, great, no purchase necessary. <laughs> but what you then, but what the insult is, and do you know what? I'm going to give that to Ken. <laughs> because he does fuck all. <laughs> he does, I know someone who does nothing. And if I give him something I found in a bin, he'll go out and buy three books. <laughs> Just pick something out of a bin. I go, yeah. can I like that? And buy some books. Do that. <laughs> How many times have you watched it? I'm so many times. <laughs> I just love it. I yeah. really like them. I think they just seem like a great... Yeah, they are. You do like them. <laughs> I'm a bit... I, I am a, a bit obsessed with it. But, uh... <laughs> it is. It's a fantastic documentary, Johnny. Yeah. And I, I have to say, thanks for choosing that. It's a treat, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. And very rarely would a clip deserve a round of applause. But, ladies and gentlemen, the outcasts. The outcasts. <laughs> Johnny, you pick this man as someone you love on telly. It's Jeff Stelling. The MK Dons are leading against Tramia Rovers. If it stays that way and Oldham continue to lead against Bradford City, then Torquay will be down. Cruel on them when they seem to have clambered clear with four straight wins. Elsewhere, it's uh, Shrewsbury nil, Scunthorpe nil, Portsmouth 1, Bolton Wanderers 1, Lake Norian 2, Mansfield 1. At Dean Court, uh, it's still two apiece and Bournemouth doing all the pressing in the dying seconds. They need a goal to get in the playoffs. Hartley will need to keep them out to get in the playoffs. It's pure drama over at Selhurst Park. Uh, Harry, Harry Redknapp's uh, Southampton trail by two goals to one. They look like they're heading out of the Premiership. They've got Manchester United to come oh. in the last game of the season and Charlie has got his hands on his head. What happened, Charlie? <laughs> Genius. Sean, this guy, it's, what you're watching here yeah, is live autism. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. I, 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 you know, I'm, you know, I tell you, but it, it is getting to Rain Man. <laughs> I mean, he literally can look at the leagues and he can go like, Tamworth have drawn against Forest Green. That's not a good result for Mark Dowson. Now, Exeter must play Greys. If Torquay are to beat Macclesfield, Leighton there at the top, who will play Swindon. If Swindon do beat the Kings, Dons, or Rotherham go down to uh, Millwall, who must play Southampton, but Southampton are losing at Burnley. Like, he can literally correlate five divisions yeah, yeah. in a sliding mental spreadsheet. <laughs> know what they're all doing. And he can say, that's not a good result for Billy Dawson, whose wife did have a daughter this morning. He'll be feeling quite tired. Mike Swales has also had a daughter, but he's played daughters today. He'll be one years old today. He has some 21st last night, which means they won't be playing away at Rotherham. If he gets on the coach, if he managed to bang his wife out of bed at Mansfield, if it's still on a travel lodge... Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> it is one of the most spectacular things on television to see this man manipulate something. Have you seen the film The Matrix? That's roughly what's going on in Jeff's head. Yeah. <laughs> What you can't see a lot of time is his arms are out of shot, he's also putting a ship in a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> he's not. He's, he's not even looking. He's not. He's actually, yeah. he's actually getting more results in on Braille. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just doing that. 
if, if ever computers take over, he will be our leader. Yeah. He will be the leader of the human brain unit to say, no, we can fight back. Yeah. That show's great. Jeff, one of my favourite people, one of my favourite performers to watch. Yeah. Another area in television where, where those kind of gifts are needed is, is in, uh, in the shopping channels. They suck you in, don't they? Yeah. I really like them. But I always think people dismiss the presenters on those shows. And I yeah. think it's a really underappreciated talent. It really Cause, is. Because what they have to do, they have to find the qualities of tact and then exaggerate them. That's a talent, isn't it? Yeah. We're not very good talent. No. <laughs> so, uh, we've got a clip here of my particular favourite shopping channel, because it has a bit of tension to it, yeah. which is Price Drop. One I've got dropping in next for you this evening, not one, but two beautiful fragrances for the gentleman. My first winning buyer has already dropped in. My second winning buyer comes in now. Maria, well done to you. Maria, Maria. Here we go. <laughs> £39. Ooh, I'm singing as well. We're in single figures. Six left. Six left in the job. Five left in the job. Get us a drink, love. It's 25. 25 pounds. Five left. Five left. Benjamin's in for Pete Lee. Producer's in. Four left. Giorgio Beverly Hills live. Jazz. One left. Price lock. <sighs> 25 pounds. <laughs> Amazing. But I don't... Who would buy... I mean, I, I don't buy men's perfume anyway, but who would buy some perfume that you haven't smelt? Already. Yeah. I got this idea that what it smells like, they just get a load of wet wipes, rinse them out, and they use the yeah. juice. Yeah. Uh, That's it. <laughs> or those things you get at Kentucky Fried Chicken, those lemon <laughs> things. The moist wipes. Yeah. That'd be great, wouldn't yeah. it? For an just aftershave. That. What are you wearing, darling? <laughs> KFC. <laughs> From there. Well, I think these shopping shows, I, I, you know, don't take this the wrong way, but I think no. it's something you might be good at. I'll be good at it, I think. So I was wondering if we could go to the break and you sell this mug. Down the tube. Yeah, okay. Just big it up. No, big I, up need, I need some uh, rhythm in the background, though. They always have that beat. Can't keep going, yeah. don't they? Okay. <laughs> I like a nice cup of tea in the morning, I certainly do. Oh, I like a nice cup of tea, right, ladies? Anyway, you'd like a nice cup of tea in this. We've got 50, or oh, 43 left. There I go again. These lovely mugs, blue inside, green on the outside. Oh, I'm doing it again. 33 left. 33 left. You get that. You can tip water in it. Look, water's slipping between. Oh. These mugs will hold it. They're not going to leak all day. I'm swilling it round there. Have a sip. You can if you like. Oh, missus, I like a nice cup of tea. Maria! <laughs> Drop your seat again. Seven left. To see you after the break. Johnny Vaughan, thank you. Welcome back. I'm here with Johnny Vaughan, who's flipping between ecstasy and rage over his life in front of the small screen. Now, we're going to see a man now who makes you wish your telly had never been bought, paid for, plugged in, delivered. Oh. You don't like him at all, do you? No, what this is, this is TV's answer to the trendy teacher. Yeah. His name is the Reverend Peter Owen Jones. And he is it? actually a vicar. <laughs> he was a quite brilliant doctor. He thought socks were unhygienic. He wore a foxskin headdress. He was a proponent of free love. <laughs> I can't remember who it was. Somebody once said, never wear a hat that's cooler than you are. <laughs> the only time he actually takes the hat off is when he's walking around Everton Football Club with all the crowds, and he's walking through, striding through like that, and he has to take it off, because even he realises he looks like a wanker. <laughs> <laughs> Look, he's got the little tight necklace there, and he wears big cowboy boots, and they always shoot him from below, and he sort of really poses like, religion can be sexy. Yeah. Religion can be fun. Yeah. Sexy Christians. Yeah. <laughs> He he's, like, he's like one of those vicars. I bet he thinks he says, I like to see I'm the sort of vicar yeah, that I'm you can come to if you need some Rizzler. Yeah. 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 <laughs> In many ways, God was a dealer. Sure, sure, yeah. <laughs> no, do you know, I'm sure he's a good guy and I'm sure it's well intentioned. But they spent a lot of money on this documentary. And I'd actually I'd actually kind of like to learn how the uh, you know the religious makeup of Britain, how it all came about and the various things about you know, you always hear these, you know, the Jacobites and the Reformation and the thing. Yeah, you've actually quite like to know what these things were about. Mm. And that's why I was kind of cheesed off with it. Because thinking this show's not getting any flack. It's getting it's coming up a budget, maybe a religious end. I don't know where it's come out of. But this is just crap. It's not serving anyone. You know, we, we've all lost with it. And I would think, actually, if you'd shown the warring Protestants and Catholics of Britain 400 years ago, you'd shown them this guy, what would happen in the future. You'd shown them a, you managed to show them a video of Peter Owen Jones, yeah? They'd have patched up their fucking differences. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. If they thought it would come to that. Yeah. There's no way we can prove that, though. No, no, there's no. <laughs> no. Oh, sure, it's speculation. <laughs> <laughs> We've got some more clips. Okay, there. now this is, this is, I know the clip you've got coming up. This is an example of him putting everything into a link. Wrong 
strongly believing that Brad Law was planning to go to the House that day, 5,000 of his roughest supporters stormed down Whitehall. There was a surge towards Westminster Abbey as they passed the Abbey, some hurled anti-Christian abuse at the entrance. You control freaks! <laughs> Just before we go any further, I, th I can explain that clip. I think the camera crew are trying to get away from him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that could be. Yeah. It's quite a hectic period of history. The last thing you need is a guy sprinting while he's telling you about it. Yeah. I mean, why do that? Yeah. I mean, I mean you didn't see Jay Bronowski, the Scent of Man, yeah. clambering over boulders like that. No, you like don't that. see that. <laughs> oh. No, when David Adam was taking about dolphins, he's not doing it while doing a front crawl yeah. alongside him, is he? Yeah. <laughs> The dolphins will come <laughs> to yeah. you. just don't sit. <laughs> yeah. Well, what, he's with the gorillas. Yes. Yeah. What he doesn't breeze past and go, <laughs> like that. He goes, I have to be quiet. Because the male gorilla might get upset with me. He might go like that. <laughs> Try I'm David Attenborough, monkey boy. <laughs> you know? There's no need. That hurt. <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> I was Johnny, I was in character, I was a gorilla. I don't know what would happen. <laughs> sorry. I tell you, he'd be a brilliant history presenter. Jeff Wait. Stelling would be really good. Jeff Stelling. He'd be fantastic, because he could do it as if it was coming out yeah. live, couldn't he? He'd be going, it's 1805 Trafalgar. Charles I for 1649. Charles I has been executed. Cromwell has <laughs> moved in there, though he won't be back. I don't think he'll try and get his son involved. But Charles II will come back in about 1655, I would think. Maybe later, after 11 years of terror, if Cromwell's son doesn't get in there. <laughs> now, James I. James I. is going to be um, okay, now let's move on to something else you can't stand. It's a, it's a culture in television you want yeah. to talk about. What is, what is that? Well, there's two things, really, Sean, that I, I that kind of annoy me in television, because television seems to be built around them. One is the, the reveal moment, which is, open your eyes, oh, my God! <laughs> and that's really a whole show, a whole show building up. It's a garden, it's your face, it's a house, always with some dubious time limit. Mm. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and you're thinking, you know, they've got these builders. Quick, they're coming, they're coming, try and wipe through the walls. You're thinking, no, take another day and make a good job of it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so makeovers is, is, a, is a sort of phenomenon in television. Yeah, make Ricky um, Lake pioneered it. Y you'll see what I loathe about it. And there's, there's just a really nasty hypocrisy going on there, which, yeah. I, which I find so loathsome. But have, have a look at it. Today, he's going to realize that the hottest woman he ever could have had has been right under his nose the whole time. And here she is now. Tracy, come on out. <laughs> <laughs> On the one hand, it's, he, he, he was being booed earlier, like, boo, shallow man, only interested in looks, yeah? And we go, oh, aren't you bad? Then, they give her a makeover, she comes down looking better. <laughs> Personally, I think she looks like she's mugged Sue Pollard. Yeah, but... yeah. <laughs> no, but I'm saying, in terms of audience reaction, that's yeah, how it's being yeah, booed. Yeah, yeah. We know the truth. Yes. <laughs> looking better. And everyone goes, aha, to the bloke. This is the hottest babe you could have had. Kind of proving that looks are a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so proving his point. Yeah, proving his point. He's like, yeah, now I'm interested. Yeah, yeah. what do you want to tell me? This is what I said at the start. Yeah. <laughs> it's the thing, is it? Look at me now. And they, they get at the bloke and said, you know, he left me because I put on like a ton of suet. And I'll be going, <laughs> enormous. Enormous. And everyone goes, boo! It, it's, what, it's what you are inside that counts. You <laughs> asshole! <laughs> like this. Everyone's booing him. Mm. And then they say, do you want to see what she looks like now? Do you? Yeah! yeah thanks for getting into that. <laughs> she comes down, everyone's like, ah to him. Mm. And all the women are like, ah don't you wish she'd kept on with her now? Kind of proving his point. Yes, I would have kept on with her if she'd done that. <laughs> what have we proved here? Answer, me right. <laughs> I wish I'd kept her out a couple of years before. She might have livened up. <laughs> the second thing, just that whole pattern of events surrounding evictions. This sort of, I just want to go now. I really do. People say, I just want to go. I just might leave. And people around them going, oh, don't leave. Because they think that looks good for them. When secretly thinking, yeah, that's one down. <laughs> but what's funny about this, when they have the eviction, both people have to appear like they're delighted by it. The person who's been evicted goes, oh, yes, it's what I wanted. And the person who's standing goes, oh, yes, yeah, brilliant. 
And you think, well, sorry, so it's good or bad to be evicted? It's yeah. fine, it's not a problem, everyone's, you know, it, you know, nobody can actually go, you fucking bastard. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes, in your face. They like me more than you. Yeah. Fuck off. Because <laughs> that's, yeah. that's what the public have said. Yeah. You're going out week one. What does that tell you? Yeah. <laughs> yes. I am a better person Read than you. Read it and weep, fuckhead. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It's... Yeah. That's what's going on. Uh, but the show that gave us the eviction, of course, is Big Brother. Yeah. Which, no, uh, I enjoyed the first series, Big Brother, I really do. And actually sort of series two, and it's a, it's a, a good thing to tap into. And I, I do find it a fascinating human experiment. But this year, it gave us, I think, the most extraordinary moment of TV. A moment that really tells us about the whole state of play with television, what we've come to. Have a look. Do not be able to crack one off in here, then? Yeah. Right, make me, make me Randy. Huh? Make me Randy. Who's that? Me. What are you doing? I'm a wank. Uh. <laughs> uh, science, don't move my box. You can move wherever you want to, but don't move my box. Okay, you're okay. You're interfering with my... You're in a box. You're... Shut your noise, come out. Shut up. You 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 shut up. <laughs> you shut up. Science, my box. Now, fuck off. You ah! That's amazing. I like the way that he manages to turn having a wank into one word. Yeah. He goes, having a wank. Yeah, it's a real life I, skill. I think that's one of the few cases where they're, they're actually no more intelligent than the original contents of those words. <laughs> yeah, but they're actually cutting to the pictures. They, the fact that these human beings, we didn't even know them before, but the fact is a man has become famous, he's on television having a wank in a box. <laughs> that's a state of play. They can command an audience of upwards of five million. Mm. Many more than we'll get for this show, Sean. <laughs> it's the point where you think, hold on, what am I doing watching them? Yes. Why, that's why, that's why, the point. Why? Who's sadder? The guy in the box or people at home watching a load of people in boxes? <laughs> what I want to know is, who's not sad in that relationship? Yes, yes. <laughs> none of us come out of it very no, well. None of us come out looking good. <laughs> Apart from Parcel Force. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they look good, yeah. Johnny, thanks for a glimpse into your TV heaven, Telly Hell. And uh, before you go, we'd like to see ourselves as a sealed knot of television on this show. <laughs> and uh, we can reenact any moment in the history of television. Is there anything you'd like to reenact? I'm not going to sing now. No, you don't <laughs> have to sing. Okay, no, I would we like to reenact something. Reenact but... something. Just whisper it in my ear. Okay. <laughs> 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 Is that possible? Yes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Johnny Vaughan! Thank you very much, Thank you very much. Oh, thanks, Johnny. I thought that went great. That was all right, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, it was slow at times, but it had been all right. Yeah. <laughs> We've got P. Rowan Jones on next week. He's... Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what should we do now? I don't know. Hello? You haven't all fucked up, have you? <laughs> Sean, go for the spin. Go for the spin, man. Lift for the roof and spin. Did it spin? Yeah. That's the showstopper. Is it? <laughs> yeah, that's how you finish. Yeah, but I'm having a wank. <laughs> Cliffs, we're throwing out the fires. We've, uh, we've met them generally, sitting in front of fires with fuck all on, man and scotch. We've done all sorts of them. Okay, uh, first, first of all, what I, I, I love about this is the fact he's specially got a badge, I think, for the documentary saying fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> love in touch. But that guy also, he gets fined by them for being late for things. Probably get my arse kicked in a fine. Yeah. But they call themselves the outcasts and they've, they've sort of yeah. outcast themselves. From society, they've made their own little sect with their own little rules. And the funny yeah. thing is, to escape society's rules, they've made up this little society that's almost stricter. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm saying, if you're late for work, you don't get your ass kicked in a fight. <laughs> but once, once you become a member of the outcast, it seems that you become irresistible to bored housewives. Women are into a bit of rough, yeah, you get a lot of women coming around, especially the married ones, that say they're happily married, they see somebody like, 
like us. And all of a sudden, like the one, they want to see what it's like the other side, like. Once they've tried it, they don't leave it. OK, OK, look, just look at that end bit again there. It's a lovely scene. He's having a, the leader is having a nice can of beer looking at a beautiful stream. But that's not hard enough. It's not hard enough. He's been told to do something destructive and anarchic. And so you're saying the documentary makers have manipulated They must have. They've manipulated. They must have egged them on. That's why it's, it's quite a funny documentary. Well, a very funny documentary, because they have really stitched these lads up. Just look at that, just that end bit again. It's a beautiful scene. I don't know if we can get it in slow motion. It's a wonderful thing. Look, can of beer. Bastard. <laughs> Not <he> goes. <laughs> Needless. It is, isn't it? Maybe the specific gravity of that beer wasn't yeah, satisfying. Yeah. His, <laughs> his his I know it only has one can because he's driving. Driving, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but their meeting place is uh, it's a very interesting place. It's a pub, stroke, gym, stroke. It's a dojo, really, isn't it? It's, it's, a, uh, it's a dojo. So you no, can do karate and have pork scratchings at the same time. This, <laughs> this, for me, is what really brings this home. It is. When I was watching it the first time, I, 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 you have to watch it again because you're laughing so much, you miss all the punchlines, even though they're not meant to be punchlines, but this pub is genuinely off the scale insane. <laughs> I used to be an ABA boxer. I trained for the Lincoln Imps. I'm just trying to get rid of some of the fat of the gut. to TV Heaven, Telly Hell. It's the show for anyone who's ever sat in front of their telly and gone, oh, for f <laughs> Jesus! It's a trick! Chicken with rhubarb. You're fat, that's why. <laughs> Oi, horse! Keys in the marmalade. <laughs> of course, we've all got our own ideas how to improve television. I want to see a show where two straight guys go around a gay guy's house and just sort his life out. <laughs> <laughs> Bleed his radiators, insulate the loft, Stink out his toilet. <laughs> Just give him a few tips. Don't stand like that. <laughs> Put your hands in your pockets. <laughs> Drink this, it's lovely. <laughs> you need a bigger dog. <laughs> and then take his socks out of the wash bin and go, they're all right, gonna have two more days out of them. <laughs> but now, to tell us what he loves and hates about television, please welcome my guest, Johnny Vaughan. <laughs> Thanks for coming on, Johnny. That's right, Sean. Well, you've given us a lot of choices of stuff that you like and hate on television. And your first choice is a documentary it's from the 1980s. It's from 1985. No, it's oh, a documentary no. uh, about a biker chapter called The, the Outcasts yeah, in, well. I think, Lincolnshire. It's surreal, it's interesting, it is hilariously funny, it's insane. The Outcasts. <laughs> You have an hanging round period, and after the members get to know you, the members vote you in. And then you have to prospect from there. And then it's down to me when you get your patch, or if you get your patch. If I miss a meeting, then probably get my ass kicked and a fine. He is a general dog's body. He does everything and anything that uh, members in the club tell him to do. We've thrown them off. <laughs> It is one of the most spectacular things on television to see this man manipulate something. Have you seen it from The Matrix? That's roughly what's going on in Jeff's head. Yeah. <laughs> what you can't see a lot of the time is his arms are out of shot. He's also putting a ship in a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> he's not. He's not even looking. He's not. He's actually, yeah. he's actually getting more results in on Braille. Yeah. <laughs> oh, just doing that. If, if ever computers take over, he will be our leader. Yeah. He'll be the leader of the human brain unit to say, no, we can fight back. Yeah. <laughs> that show's great. Jeff, one of my favourite people, one of my favourite performers to watch. Yeah. Another area in television where, where those kind of gifts are needed is, is in, uh, in the shopping channels. They suck you in, don't they? Yeah. I'd really like them. But I always think people dismiss the presenters on those shows. And I yeah. think it's a really underappreciated talent. It really is. Because what they have to do, they have to find the qualities of tat and then exaggerate them. <laughs> That's a talent, isn't it? Yeah. We're not very good talent. No. 
So uh, we've got a clip here of my particular favourite shopping channel because it has a bit of tension to it, yeah. which is Price Drop. One I've got dropping in next for you this evening, not one, but two beautiful fragrances for the gentleman. My first winning buyer has already dropped in. My second winning buyer comes in now. Maria, well done to you. Maria, Maria. Here we go. <laughs> £39. Ooh, I'm singing as well. We're in single figures. Six left. Six left in the job. Five left in the job. Get us a drink, Mum. It's 25. 25 pounds. Five left. Five left. Benjamin's in for Pete Lee. Patricia's in. Four left. Georgia Beverly Hills live jazz. One left. Rice lock. <sighs> 25 pounds. <laughs> Most. But I don't who would buy. I mean, I, I don't buy men's perfume anyway. But who would buy some perfume that you haven't smelt? Already. Yeah. I got this idea that what it smells like, they just get a load of wet wipes, rinse them out, and they use the yeah. juice. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> well, those things you get at Kentucky Fried Chicken, those lemon <laughs> things. The moist wipes. Yeah. That'd be great, wouldn't yeah. it? For an just aftershave. What are you wearing, darling? <laughs> KFC. <laughs> <laughs> For men. Well, I think these shopping shows, I, I, you know, don't take this the wrong way, but I think no. it's something you might be good at. I'd be good at it, I think. So I was wondering if we could go to the break and you sell this mug. Down the tube. Yeah, okay. Just big it up. No, big I, up need, I need some that rhythm in the background, though. They always have that beat. Can't keep going, yeah. don't they? Okay. <laughs> yeah, get me out together again. I need to start doing some serious fighting. Man. The rest of the club, um, they're all into it. They're all doing their own training. <laughs> but it's in, in my problem, we maybe have winner stays on at pool. Yeah. There they get to get the cue. <laughs> We're but certainly not the David Lloyd centre, is it? No. That, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. It's a very different ambience and feel they've gone for. Home's from. place it ain't. No. <laughs> yeah. I mean, do you have a favourite bit? Do you like a, a choice? My favourite bit is um, with the man who's the designated leather worker. Uh, because I believe that when he describes how he got into leather working, it is the most extraordinary backstory yeah, it is, uh, yeah. of anything I've ever heard on television. You cannot, you, 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 it just passes by you and it went off about the 50th viewing. You think to yourself, what, what on earth did happen? The 50th viewing. <laughs> yeah, you think, what was the story of that? This is... Well, let, let's, uh, let's see, let's see. Somebody bought a pouch, it was in bits, a cheap one, out of a, a rubbish bin, it was in a leather shop and asked me to put it together. Bought about three books and just studied it out of that, like, you know. OK, now this guy, let's just listen to that, yeah? What he says. He says, somebody bought a pouch. It was in bits. <laughs> somebody bought a pouch. It was in bits. <laughs> a cheap one. <laughs> Out of a rubbish bin. <laughs> in a leather shop. <laughs> Look, somebody bought a pouch, asked me to put it together. If you... And then he says, I bought about three books. Stood it out of there like... <laughs> Things in rubbish bins normally are cheap. Yeah. In fact, do you know what? I'm, I'm going to tell you straight, they're normally free. <laughs> I see things are rubbish, but I think, great, no purchase necessary. <laughs> but what you then, but what the insult is, and do you know what? I'm going to give that to Ken. <laughs> because he does fuck all. <laughs> he does, I know someone who does nothing. And if I give him something I found in a bin, <laughs> he'll go out and buy three books. <laughs> Just pick something out of a bin, I go, yeah. Kind of like that and buy some books. Like, oh, <laughs> How many times have you watched it? Oh, so many times. <laughs> <laughs> I just love it. I yeah. really like them. I think they just seem like a great. Yeah, they are. You do like. <laughs> I'm a bit. I, I am a, a bit obsessed with it. But, uh... <laughs> it is. It's a fantastic documentary, Johnny. Yeah. And I, I have to say, thanks for choosing that. It's a treat, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. And very rarely would a clip. Deserve a round of applause. But, ladies and gentlemen, the outcasts. The outcasts. Johnny, you picked this man as someone you love on telly. It's Jeff Stelling.
The MK Dons are leading against Tramia Rovers. If it stays that way and Oldham continue to lead against Bradford City, then Torquay will be down cruel on them when they seem to have clambered clear with four straight wins. Elsewhere, it's uh, Shrewsbury nil, Scunthorpe nil, Portsmouth 1, Bolton Wanderers 1, Lake Norian 2, Mansfield 1 at Dean Court. Uh, it's still two apiece and Bournemouth doing all the pressing in the dying seconds. They need a goal to get in the playoffs. Hartley will need to keep them out to get in the playoffs. It's pure drama over at Selhurst Park. Uh, Harry, Harry Redknapp's uh, Southampton trail by two goals to one. They look like they're heading out of the Premiership. They've got Manchester United to come oh. in the last game of the season and Charlie has got his hands on his head. What happened, Charlie? <laughs> Genius! Sean, this guy, it's, what you're watching here is live autism. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. I, 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 you know, I'm, you know, I'd say it, but it, it is getting to Rain Man. <laughs> I mean, he literally can look at the leagues and he can go like, Tamworth have drawn against Forest Green. That's not a good result for Mark Dowson. Now, Exeter must play Greys. If Torquay are to beat Macclesfield, Leighton there at the top, who will play Swindon. If Swindon do beat the Kings, Dons, or Rotherham go down to uh, Millwall, who must play Southampton, but Southampton are losing at Burnley. He can literally correlate five divisions yeah, yeah, in a yeah. sliding mental spreadsheet. <laughs> Learn what they're all doing. And he can say, that's not a good result for Billy Dawson, whose wife did have a daughter this morning. He'll be feeling quite tired. Mike Swales has also had a daughter, but he's played daughters today. He'll be one years old today. He has some 21st last night, which means they won't be playing away at Rotherham. <laughs> if he gets on the coach, if he manages to drag his wife out of bed at Mansfield, if it's still on a travel lodge, uh, uh, uh. <laughs>